Hello everyone, Ben Emerson here. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm in my coaching academy here at San Martins. I'm joined by Holly. Holly, thank you so much for joining us today. We are going to show you how I use 3D in a lesson and some of the benefits that I see on a daily basis of how I use the system to get the most out of my players. Just to give you a bit of insight into Holly, Holly is one of my star pupils. She is 14 years old, hits it miles past me already. She comes from a gymnastics background. We've literally just done a TPI uh, screen on her. She's got a fitness handicap of plus three, which I, is ridiculous as it is. Um, but coming from, a, from the gymnastic world, she has the ability to get ridiculously into some positions. She can turn, just keep turning, 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 turning. She's been so hypermobile. And she can actually get herself out of those good positions. So she can turn 90 degrees easily, but she then carries on going, keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. She's like an owl, she can keep going. <laughs> Unfortunately, what we start to see with, with Holly is, and you would agree with this, right? Yeah. You, you can actually, you can turn to this position, but unfortunately, when you start turning more, you start coming out of the posture, carry on turning, and now we get into this, what we call reverse spine. She also has an issue which we've worked on hard of getting her posture bang on. So it used to be very less than you in this position, which then just helps or sort of gets you into less posture and it gets you into reverse spine, sorry, I should say, and easier. Right. So what I want you to try and do is we're going to go for a couple of training drills to show how we've got you out of that posture. And then I'm going to go through some of the biofeedback drills that I do with Holly just to train her to feel some different kind of moves and different positions. So we've we've got a Holly you kit it up in the 3D system. Let me just check it. You're looking good. And if I can just calibrate it for you. So if you can just stand like you're about it's good so you can just try and hit a ball first, like pretend like you're gonna hit a ball. And then I just want you to stand as tall as you can. And just put the club in either hand like this. So you're gonna flatten this, flatten that. And I'm just going to calibrate it just so it's bang on with you. So if you have a look on the screen, do a little dance. Nice. Welcome to the world of 3D. So what we're going to try and do first is let's let's show everybody your normal S posture, like before yeah. we obviously worked on it. So let's go into that like rounded kind of motion that we saw. So it's hard to see on the camera, but big S kind of shape. And you were, by the way, oh, you were a lot worse than that yeah. at one point, but yeah. it was ridiculous. So using the biofeedback on the screen, what I want you to try and do is like match up the lines and actually hear that sound. So as you can you hear that sound, you're in that nice tone. That's you finding a nice neutral position. Now if you come out of it, let's go into that S, can you see all of a sudden you come out? What are the best ways to do it? So I want you to look at the screen to start with. I literally want you to try and find it by going into the tilt. So Holly is the only person that I've ever recorded on, on the TPI app where she's only, she's only failed the two tests, but she struggled on two tests. One was balance, which from a gymnast is quite funny, <laughs> obviously one on a pole. Um, but the other one was the pelvic tilt test. Yeah. Right? So for those of you who don't know the pelvic tilt, the pelvic tilt is very simple to do, it's a five arm position, going into S posture and then posteriorizing out and actually flattening your back. So when you do it, well, let's, let's show everyone. So you go into, go into a five-arm position, cross your arms, and then if you want to start bringing it down, and then back up. So like, the nice thing is you can do it, right? You're, you are moving, but there's a lot of shake and bake in there, aren't there? There's a lot of perturbation, right? There's, so that kind of move says it's going to be hard for you to do in your golf swing. In fact, I've never seen many, I've seen many people that have recorded do that shake and bake move and still to hold that posture nicely. The weird thing is obviously for people that have never seen this before is why on earth are you asking me to do that funny move, right? And here's the thing, in the golf swing, you actually do that move, right? Cover by the cover So like, we've seen when we were recording you, you, if this was dead zero, if I was to tilt, actually go into my posture, my, my bend here is about 18 to 20 degrees. When I actually turn to the top of the swing, 
I lose a bit, I've added a bit of sideband in here, but I'm actually, I'm, I'm no longer in that 20. I've actually tilted out and I've flattened my back slightly and I've moved a couple of degrees. But when I come through to impact, I'm no longer like this, right? I have my, I've literally tilted out and I'm in this position, right? You don't see anybody like this here. <laughs> like, it looks ridiculous, but that, that actual movement happens in the golf swing, right? So if you can't do it fluidly, which is why those exercises that you've been doing are so key to device them. By the way, it was a lot worse than what we've just seen. It was quite funny the first time. But actually, like, she's moving in the right direction to have that as fluid as possible. Where I come from, from a, obviously a golf coaching perspective, is if she's struggling to get out of it anyway in a smooth motion, the more that you go into that S posture, it's now going to be even harder to get out. So it just makes complete sense to actually get you in a more neutral position. So then it's easier just to focus on turn. But if we talk about then reverse spine for a second, so this is you going to the top of the swing and actually extending up and keep on reversing and because you can turn so much you just like this all over. So one of the things that we're obviously taught as a youngster is to try and take the club as far as we can, right? That's something that we all get taught. You see the old videos of John Daly all the way down here. And actually you like to see a lot of the long drives go all the way down here. From from our perspective, right, if we want to hit the ball a long way, there's there's two ways to do it. There is is either we can use the force, so force in the ground, not actually turning much, but using kind of brute strength. And because we're adding a rotation, we're actually getting this torque, and the more torque we put onto it, we can actually produce some powerful things. Or we can actually try and do what I said, try and take the club as far as we can. We call that ramp time. The, the further that club goes, the more time it's got to generate speed, the more time to apply that force, and can produce some big numbers. Uh, Sasha um, McKenzie does it very well. He just says, if you put you on a chair and I put you like a foot away from a wall and I was gonna push you into the wall from like a foot away, it would hurt, but it, it wouldn't kill you, right? If I went back like 20 feet and I took a run up and now I pushed you all the way into the wall, it would really hurt because I've got more time to generate speed. Where the long drives do this really well is they're big, they're strong, they're using the ground really well. But they're also all the way back here, so they're combining the two. For you, because it's so easy for you to just rotate, because you are so flexible and so hypermobile, we've just got to get you to a position where you're comfortable stopping and you're not, you think this is flexing forward, this is extending backwards. In a golf swing, we want to flex forward and we want to rotate. There's a point where you are actually in the golf swing starting to extend up and moving up and up and up. But when we start going past this and actually go into the zero to minus numbers, which is what we saw on your 3D graphs, is actually when we go into this position, it's not because you've just carried on turning, it's because your spine has just kept going up and up and up and up and up. So if I was to do this, if I was to put my arms out straight and I was to extend backwards and I was actually to then rotate and have my left shoulder down, this is that position that we've just seen you do. Yeah. If we do that again, you can see what we see on the European tour is actually when you go down this way, if you flex forward, left shoulder is still going to go down, right? But as I rotate and I stay flexed forward, now I'm still in this position where I was to draw a line from my head to my hips, it's leaning away. It's never going that way back, which just gets you really trapped behind. And as you've seen, we can hit all sorts of yeah. cool shots. <laughs> like everything, right? Like, I, most people that I work with would love to be able to turn as much as you do. I always say like a glass of wine is a wonderful thing, five bottles is a problem, right? You can overdo anything. You're 14 years old, please don't drink. <laughs> but this is this is what I mean, right? I want you to learn, so let's get you into a nice position. We're going to turn, but I don't want you to extend up. We want that flex forward. So what I'm going to do is do the next biofeedback drill. If I just go back, or well, now that you feel what posture's like, we're going to go bend at the top. I'm going to do this without reps. And so now if we take a setter up, and I want you to practice this, right? So as you turn to the top, and I still feel like you're flexed forward, still bent forward, I'm actually going to rotate so you can hear that sound. And stop. 
See how easy it is to nearly get out of it? It's like literally easy. So now you've got to realize kind of 90 degree position, you carry on turning, but you've stayed forward doing it, you haven't gone back. So now go out of it like you were going. So now go back out, so lean back. Most people at home watching this cannot do that position. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Like, but actually that is a great way of you learning how to get to that top position. So now we want to try and hit some balls with it, right? So what I like to try and do is actually do it as slow as you can on the way back. Like let's stop, hear that sound. And I call this like awareness speed. So just as slow as you can, let's get to that nice position. And let's see if we can hit a shot. Okay. That was awesome. So good. So, so good. Now let's try, just for a bit of feedback, let's try and do the bad one. Right? Okay. So let's go, let's, let's try and do your normal. Let's go, keep turning, keep turning, keep turning. And see at what point we go past that sound. It's funny to think, right, like how that kind of happens. Like right? you now watch the screen when you do that. So you can watch the screen on here. So actually turn to the top, listen to the sound, and now come out of it. Now let's go up and up and up. So that's you kind of out of posture. Yeah. So this is a really great way of using biofeedback to, to actually train those good positions, get you used to hearing the sound as opposed to just seeing it. And, and then you can just kind of so let's try that again and let's see if we can do a full swing so a little bit faster this time and let's see what we do okay. i'm coming a little bit past but not the sound huge, huge, yeah. yeah so how does that feel how do you think you can practice like that would that be yeah it's, it, it doesn't feel Weird, but it obviously feels out of the ordinary because I'm normally so far back. And it feels like a three quarter swing. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing that though, from a power perspective, like yeah. feel and real are two very different things, and that's one of the beauties of, yeah. of 3D technology. But actually, like imagine you had this at home. I mean, lovely. All day. It's not that expensive. Have a chat with your dad. I will. This is a pleasant idea. So let's try the same one again. Like, I want to go, let's do three balls. And this is a nice little drill that I love to do with my players. Is we're going to do the first one, and we're going to try and build, hear that sound at the top. And I want you to do this as slow as you can, right? Okay. We're talking like grand speed. Okay. All right, this is like full awareness speed. I, I always say you can't do it slow, but it's not like hoping how to do it fast, right? So I want you to feel like you're going to take it nice and slow to the top of the swing, and then feel that, hear that sound, get into that position, and then unleash. Yeah. That was excellent. That's so good. So now, obviously, we don't want to just hit it like that. We want to kind of build it into the swing, yeah. right? So let's just do the next one tiny bit faster. Like if that was kind of twenty percent, thirty percent. Let's kind of ramp up to sort of fifty to see if we can integrate it into your swing. Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't as good, that was more... All of a sudden, adding a bit more velocity, so it comes back. When it starts, yeah. And then just, if we were on the driving range, we would do the whole process again, but as we're doing this, now we're still full. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure I was there long enough to hear the no. sound as much going too fast. And that's the nice thing when you're doing something slowly, right? To so think of other sports, like you, you walk through the planes, like in pretty much every sport yeah. you do. No one actually goes full pelt. Apart from one sport of golf, we like to just tonk it down there as hard <laughs> as we can, right? But that's really hard to change a movement pattern. And that's why this biofeedback is so cool, is you can not only see it when you look on the screen, you can hear it. Which yeah. means then it's easier to relate back to how that is from a feeling. And then by going through those three balls of just going slow, medium, and then fast, it's just a really great way of like integrating it into the swing. Okay. 
one of the cool things with 3D is then obviously we can just test how that, what that actually done in this yeah. way. So let's go back and actually film a, we're just going to measure you up. So let's just recalibrate it again. So stand nice and tall just in case not, anything's moved. Um, fasten the wrist. Nice. That was great. And let's, let's hit a shot. Sounds like a good shot. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a great shot. So one of the things we can then look at in 3D is we can then go into that exact shot that you've just done. We can look at all the reports, all the graphs of which segments started first. So transition sequence, so that's you at the top of the swing, before the club change direction, lower body going first, which you do so well, lower body going first, then upper body. The hands have then moved before the club, which I know is something we are working on. Yeah. Then we can see how things start to slow down, but then we can also see how fast these segments are moving and your hips are moving ridiculously fast <laughs> for a 14 year old. Um, if I then go back and actually let's look at the video playback of that particular last one, and we go to we just turn on shoulders. So bear in mind, we were seeing the turn on the right get to 110, 18. Look at this, still going quite far, Holly. But now you go to 106. Yeah, that is better from like 150. It's still, we've still got some work yeah. to do, right? The, the job's not over. But the bend is, if you think, minus number is when you go back this way. Okay. So we want to, but that was ridiculously far back. Like, so that has improved at the top. You've still got a huge turn, which is why you can generate so much power. But we've got to keep working on this to get, get that low. Yeah. One of the things we're going to see, and we've seen it when we use your pressure plate, is when you have, when you go so much this way, you've got to work so much harder to kind of get out of it. To the point with you with the driver, as you know, off, off the ground, ground. Yeah. you're literally airborne. Do you think that would be useful? Should we do that next yeah. time? Next time yeah. I see, yeah. So we'll carry on on that process next time. I, I'm desperate to see you in a plus number. Okay. Yeah. I'd love to see you in uh, feeling like holding that position better and actually getting used to hitting some shots. So we will yeah. do that again. Yeah. Holly, thank you so much for, for doing right. that. Not many people are watching this, I'm sure, so don't, don't worry. <laughs> Um, everyone at home, I hope you enjoyed that. Ask me as many questions as you like. I love 3D. I've been a fan of it. I'm using it for eight years now, I think, with the guys from the K-Motion. So ping us any questions at any time. Ask us after this. Um, I'm always happy to help. I hope you've enjoyed that and uh, look forward to your questions. All right, um, so that was the end of Ben's video segment. So we're gonna open it up for a few minutes uh, for any questions that you may have for Ben um, or for us, uh, we'll, we'll let you go for um, a few minutes here. So uh, first question we have is from Jim, peak hip speed is occurring at impact instead of transition. How do you get the peak speed to occur early? Ben, can you uh, hear that question? Guys, can you hear me okay? Yeah, for yep. sure, yep. You can't see me though, can you? Fortunately not. Unfortunately not, not right now, no. Um, and we'll read that again if you didn't hear that. Um, so Jim Estes is on. Hey, Jim, how are <laughs> you? Um, so peak hip speed is occurring at impact instead of transition. How do you get the peak speed to occur early? Yeah, so so this is something that we've seen with Holly. She does, if you look at, and before I say this, if you, I'll stick my email in the, in the, in the question panel on the side. So if anyone's got any questions that I can't get to, ping us an email. If you want to discuss some graphs, send us some graphs. Happy to discuss them all the time but one of the things that i see with holly is she her hips have completely over rotated when it comes to impact right she doesn't slow them down 
as as best as we should right so we should see that pelvis halfway through start to decelerate so there is with holly there is hardly any deceleration at all right it all happens after it happens after impact so one of the drills that we do quite a lot as you've probably seen this with a with an impact bag is actually getting her into an impact position put the bag out in out in front at impact and then what i get her to do is actually take a swing hit the bag as hard as you can and then get a recoiling back up to the top as fast as she can keeping her core engaged as best she can the whole way through doing this three or four times and then trying to put it into the swing as a full shot the other thing we've worked really hard on is actually doing some left-handed golf swings like we've seen this I, i've seen this a lot i've seen some great uh, great feedback and great um great results from this is actually instead of just working all the time going the way that they do actually let's get them swinging the other way right let's actually build up some muscles the other way and actually get them used to going the other way and actually all of a sudden you start seeing this deceleration pattern going down uh, it was quite famous not that long ago with phil mickelson got in a, an argument with somebody a coach about his deceleration of how he kind of works in his swing and one of the things he mentioned was actually if you were in a car going 200 miles out go, driving 200 miles an hour you're only driving 200 miles an hour based on the fact that you are happy that you can put on the brakes and you can stop right so sometimes you have to train those brakes right you have to train the other way the other direction and those two drills for me just are, are, are two of the best that's that's great um great answer there thanks ben for that we have another one that just came in from jose soto jose how are you um so based on what you were working on earlier what number ben are you looking for for her when you're at negative six ben so um and at the top yeah. at, at the top so yeah she was at negative six um ben um obviously over rotated getting into early or uh, getting into reverse spine. So what number are you looking for um, as she's in that negative six? Obviously we want to go positive, but what are you looking for there? Well, we've, we've not managed to get positive just yet. Right. <laughs> so if we can get to zero, I would be, I'd be over the moon, right? Cause it's that, that's a big number and a big jump to kind of go. Um, and I, and I see this time and time again with players. This, it's so easy for her to get into reverse spine. It's so easy for her to keep extending. But actually, you, you don't want to stay too far flex forward as well, as you guys know, right? It's, there is there's a happy balance. So I'm after kind of the zero number with her. That's something we're, we're working on. Um, and, and I'm convinced we're going to get there. Yep. Okay, great, perfect. Uh, and we'll do one more before we jump into the next segment. Uh, looks like from Justin Martin. Uh, do you use the K-Motion feedback, so the biofeedback as law, well, or just suggestion for preferred movement pattern? Yeah, nice question. So for me, the, the movement pattern is, 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 is vital, right? It's the, one of the beauties, I guess, with K-Motion is you have the ability to change the difficulty level on on the biofeedback right so you can actually make it easier or harder on your player what i'm trying to do is actually get them to understand at the top of the swing or in this instance exactly what we're trying to do right so if we were doing that long term i'd be making that harder and harder and harder and harder and harder one of the things i would be making sure i'm always doing and you saw me in that video is i'm i'm calibrating it all the time right just in case it's moved just in case something else has kind of happened um, just to make sure that it's absolutely bang on as best we can. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Definitely. Definitely.